evening so this evening I'm going after a fox and my little mooch about I've noticed a red fox in uh, one of the fields on the edge of the forest that I frequent and uh, so my mission tonight is to go down there with my uh, camera gear and try and get some shots that's of course if the uh, fox will turn up may not turn up but it's now 1900 hours so uh, less people about now not as you're getting many there anyway so I'm hoping go and find a little spot I've got two spots uh, I had a look at this morning ready for tonight Let's see which one's best for the light set myself up and it's just a waiting game so if the fox turns up great if he doesn't one of them things got a flask of coffee it's bloody hot don't know why I chose coffee so I'm just going to sit down set my gear up drink coffee and wait sounds like a plan almost there Got prowling through the uh, Vietnamese jungle so warm absolutely so warm we'll have to get there not too far from my house to be fair short drive and a bit of a hike I've got a lot of gear in this backpack it's quite heavy so walking with this heavy load in this heat not great if we get some pictures of the fox or if we just see it it'll be worth it okay there's the forest and I'm going this way Okay, I'm at my location now. This is a field I've seen the fox in in the evenings. Last two times I've been here. So, that's where it was. It was, been all around here and against the hedgerow. This time last week, this field was completely grassed over at about three foot high grass and um, the farmers cut it the last time I was here a few nights ago he put it into a bales and that's when I saw the fox quite easily now the grass has been cut so one of the areas that I staked out to shoot him is in there I'm going to get in a ditch there then it's pointing up so I'm not seeing very much basically just my head and my lens popping out the top but well I've got a little gap in the hedge right over there I can set myself up and hide I'm just trying to decide now with the sun I don't really want the fox backlit Yeah, I think I'll tuck in the edge row. Uh. Yep, I'll go in the edge row. These aren't your urban foxes. that will take kebabs out of your hand. And look scrawny with uh, no fur on the tail and covered in mange. Foxes here are proper countryside foxes. Very, very wary of humans. So photographing them is a challenge to me. If they see you, hear you, smell you, they're gone. And really not easy to photograph one bit. But the bonus is when you do get a photograph, you're in prime view condition. That's a challenge photograph of a very skittish animal. 
extremely rewarding. Okay, I'm going to uh, get set up. Right, right, just got set up. Yeah, I'm in position now. Just a waiting game. Fox coming from any direction. As I said that. There's a noise to my left. <laughs> Uncanny. Anyway, I'm in position now. I'm talking a little bit quietly. Because their sense of hearing is extremely good. I'm um, tucked into a hedgerow, if you can see. Well tucked into a hedgerow. And that is more for you. So if he comes in front of my lens, I'll bag him. The added advantage is I've see, also seen Fox up here. So I don't know what direction he's coming down in. If he does turn up, of course. But if he does turn up down there, then hopefully I'll see him and I'll be able to track him. But yeah, it's quite good. I'm in the uh, shaded hedgerow, so uh, I'm not roasting anymore. Um, I'm decently camouflaged up. Obviously I'm not going to move around too much. Vlogging doesn't help though. <laughs> Equipment wise, I've got a uh, Canon 7D Mark II and 500 f4 lens. I've got it set up to uh, Auto ISO at the moment because I've got some shade in front of me and then sunlight. I've got F4 aperture, so I want to blur out the background if he turns up. And that's the big if if he turns up. So many times you go out to photograph an animal and just don't turn up, but persistence pays off eventually. And they will turn up, right place, right time. So hopefully it will turn up first, soon, while there's decent light. And if he does, what I'll do is I'll get a few shots. This is the first time I've ever vlogged um, doing a wildlife photography trip. So uh, this is all new to me, really. <laughs> But I'm all excited to do it. I hope he turns up. It's not a failure. It's not going to be a failure anyway. If he doesn't turn up, it's going to be a beautiful location. Lovely view in front of me. I've got the birds chattering away. It's great anyway. So if the fox turns up, it's a bonus. If he doesn't, all is not lost. Okay, if the fox does turn up, my plan is to bag a few shots with the camera. Be set up. Hope you can see it. 500 F4 on the King Kirk King Cobra head carbon fibre tripod 2. Got a camouflage um, cloth in front of it. I want to blend in completely. So I'm going to bag a few images if he turns up. And I'm going to try and turn the camera on and uh, get, get him on video as well if I can. Easier said than done. And like I say, there's very skittish around here, the countryside foxes, <coughs> so they don't hang around if they see you. In the city, they'll be quite close and watch you. But here, they'll just, they'll just run, go to a distance, then turn around and watch. But uh, it's quite a distance normally. Okay, this is cool. This is really cool. Never vlogged there uh, doing this before. 
I've always been against it because I thought talking into a camera it's not very stealthy is it but I thought I'll give it a go okay hope he turns up foxes are one of my favourite animals and certainly one of my most favourite animals to photograph simply because they're, they're so challenging and you just can't predict them can't predict them at all and what's seen him down here a couple of times but that doesn't mean say he's going to turn up or she's going to turn up but hey I've got my flask of coffee oh, sitting on my walk stool I'm comfortable and not hot it don't get much better than this it really doesn't Still waiting. I'm trying not to vlog in a way because I want to be quiet as anything. A bit difficult though when you've got a little camera down there, you're just tempted to use it all the time. Okay, I hope you can hear me alright. What's that? Thought I saw a flash of ginger in the long blades of grass. Probably just me always playing tricks on me. But yeah, if you're doing this sort of thing, I totally recommend a pair of binoculars for checking out the distant nooks and crannies that you can or you can't see. Helps tremendously to track your subjects. A bit extra weight to add to the heavy weight anyway, but worth it. Anyway, got some noises around here. There's a squirrel above my head a minute ago. Anyway, I've got my coffee. Just waiting, 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 waiting. I hope he comes out. I want to capture the eyes of the fox. You can uh, photograph the eyes of the fox. You've captured the spirit of the fox. Always so important in a photograph to me. But hey, I'm not after any award winning shots. Any shots of a fox tonight will be good. It's just nice to be out. Time to take advantage. Yeah, by the way, what I meant to say earlier was. Um, got the 7D Mark III, which shoots 10 frames a second, but because it's a fox, um, like the fox and the deer, when I do fox and deer world ones photography, um, I'll put it on silent shutter mode, which gives you a burst rate of 4 shots a second, but that's adequate for a fox and a deer to be honest. Plus um, I've noticed when I was shooting with a 7D Mark I, doing this kind of thing, the shutter's quite loud. The fox and deer instantly sort of look your way. <coughs> but with this uh, 7D Mark II with the silent shooting mode, it gives you a fighting chance. They don't hear it as much. So, just a little tip for you guys. If you've got 7D Mark II, always worth use. Always worth using the uh, silent shutter mode. It's not exactly silent. It's a lot more suppressed solids than the uh, normal shooting shooter mode. Well, nothing yet, guys. But that's the view. And I'm ready. That's where I thought I saw the uh, flash of red. In that area. Not sure if it was or if my eyes were playing tricks. Really not sure. 
the hay. It's a nice view anyway. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I think a worse place is to be might work. <laughs> That's tomorrow morning. Well, it's not much of a wind, but the bit of wind that there is is blown into my face. But the reason I chose this uh, location as opposed to that. So, unless the fox is right behind me, he won't smell me. I've not got any deodorants on or anything smelly like that. Hmm, something moving over there. Male pheasant. Now a fox would love to have that. But he's not hanging round. He's going for it. He's a Linford Christie of pheasants. Like hell. Anyway, yeah, I like to get into place before um, I anticipate a subject turning up. So I'll blend in with the landscape and, well, become part of the landscape. But uh, yeah, nothing yet. It's a nice golden light now, but not so much on this field in front of me, but on the um, embankment over there, let's show you. Field in shadow. As you can see, look that. Got some beautiful golden light. Guess what? Still nothing. Well, I've just had a female doe moonshack come out as I got them here. I don't know what the quality is going to be like then. I've got it on the camera as well. Let's quickly show you the camera. I don't know if you can see that on here. Yeah. Female doe muncher. That's a good sign because if they're out, it means the fox could be out any second. Probably won't be, knowing my look, but you never know. Just the camera. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's a shame.
chess space with a fox is just unbelievable. Gorgeous, gorgeous creature. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Amazing creatures, beautiful creatures. What a beauty, absolute beauty. Things like this is just unbelievable. To me, it means everything. Ah, oh, that's just absolutely. He knows I'm here, but he can't. He doesn't realise I'm human. You know something's going on, but it's obviously not scaring him. Oh man, that's just amazing. I'm so chuffed, let's look it out now. You just can't put money on this. this is, I've waited hours for this. It just doesn't disappoint. Okay, I don't think you can see anything on camera. I'm just going to continue watching him. He's still right in front of me. Absolutely amazing. See if I can get him on this camera for you. His territory. Looks like it's a dog fox. Wow. Couldn't believe how dark it is now. It doesn't appear dark on the camera.
Well, that's it for me. Packing up, going home. It's now 25 to 11 at night. Wow, that was great, that was great. Honestly thought this video was gonna be a fail. I even had thoughts of calling it Fox Photography Fail. But boy, heck it wasn't. That was great. I mean, the Muntjac doe saying that was great. And the fox turned up. Brilliant. The fox feeding, he, he just knew I was there, but he didn't realise I was human. He just knew something was not quite right in his environment. We carried on feeding and looking. But to, to connect with that fox was just absolutely awesome. Oh, I don't know if you can see me or not. It's getting quite dark. On camera, you never quite see the uh, exactly what it's like, but yeah, it's too dark to focus on the fox uh, with this camera, hence why I put it on the, the big camera. But wow, <laughs> so chuffed, so chuffed now. Okay, I've run out of coffee, I've had my fox fix, I've got some photographs, quite a few photographs. It turned out when it was getting quite dark, so the quite high, quite high ISO shots, but it's going to be a bit grainy, but I can sort that out. It doesn't matter. I didn't want award-winning shots. Just wanted shots of the fox, and I got it. So I'm well chuffed. So back to work tomorrow, but yeah, a fantastic uh, end to the day. My day off with the fox. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed it. That's a typical sort of uh, outing when you're doing wildlife photography. Dressing like a prat, <laughs> but it does yield results. Patience. Okay, thanks for watching. If you got to the end of it without getting too bored, catch you again later. Stay safe.